Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Northwest Baseball Report show. I'm your host, Josh, and man, it has been so much fun doing this this website, this show, getting things going again. I just, I know, I, I can't even put into words, to be honest. It's amazing. We got over 700 people following on Twitter. Uh, the site has had over 10,000 views in 30 days. That's just uh, it's amazing to me. It's, it blows my mind to think of what's going on. I've had a ton of fun gathering the information for the season preview articles. That has been actually just, it's been interesting for me because I get to see a lot of names that I recognize, a lot of names I don't recognize, and get to learn stuff about a lot of the teams here in the Northwest. And if you are a summer travel ball team or club, uh, Legion team, and you want to get your, your team's article put in there, contact me i will send you the questions you just fill those out i'll edit it put it back together the way i've been formatting things and and get it out there and you know it's fun it's a way to highlight the kids highlight your team and just to i don't know just promote baseball across the northwest it's been it's been great and so far the teams that have done it have loved it the players love it i just i'm excited i'm gonna keep it going and I got some more ideas of different types of articles and things I want to do this summer and going into the fall and the winter. And, you know, I'm excited for actually come the next off season because I started this pretty late in the game. Uh, you know, obviously didn't start until February 22nd. And so I missed doing, you know, season preview articles for all of the uh, Cascade Collegiate Conference teams, all the uh, the GNAC and the NWC, uh, even maybe trying to do some stuff for, uh, Pac-12, you know, because I know a few coaches in, in that area as well. So missed out on doing a lot of those things, but next off season, going to really hit that, do a lot of fall stuff as well. So a lot of things I'm excited about, looking forward to, but also one of the things I'm super excited about is the sponsors that I've already gotten so far to help pay for the costs of the site and the podcast, because guys, even though I spend full-time hours on Northwest Baseball Report and 90 Know-It-All, I don't get paid full-time hours. In fact, I, I don't really get paid much of anything uh, except for maybe when I sell some photos here and there. So having sponsors really does help pay for things to keep going. So first of all, Portland Baseball Club, they have been come on strong. They're a huge sponsor. I, I just want to say thank you to them. And for those of you who live in the Portland area and you're looking for a team to kind of check out or a facility, Check them out. I've got the website on the uh, on my website. You just click on their link. You'll see the photo for Pit Portland Baseball Club. The link will also be in the description below uh, on this episode, like it normally is. And guys, they've got summer ball teams, fall ball teams. They got an indoor facility. They got opportunities for lessons. So great opportunity. Go check that out. And you know, just even just go and say thank you to them. You know, for sponsoring Northwest Baseball Report. Go tell them thank you because. Uh, even little things like that can go a long way. The other sponsor I have is Rep the Pacific Northwest. It's Rep the PNW, and it's a hat company that has one of the coolest hat designs I've ever seen, especially for someone who's from the Northwest like me. It's Washington, Oregon, Idaho, stitched together with baseball seams, and I'm wearing the hat right now that I got, and I am seriously, I'm going to buy one or two more because, one, I know I go through hats pretty quickly, but also because it's just cool. It is one of the coolest hats I have. I know that I can go cover any team in the Northwest and not worry about wearing their opposing team's hat, uh, which I have done sometimes on purpose, sometimes not on purpose. But this is a hat that represents everybody in the Northwest, uh, at least in the three main states I cover. You know, I do have it open to cover even some British Columbia teams, Alaska, uh, Montana, even Hawaii, if they you know, if they want to have some stuff on the side as well. But I just want, once again, thank you to my, my, my sponsors, Portland Baseball Club and Rep the Pacific Northwest. It is, it means a lot to me and it's able to keep the site going, the podcast, get it up and running again. Um, you know, I'm always looking for more sponsors. I mean, let's, let's be honest. There's a lot of things I want to do, a lot of games I want to cover, and every sponsor I have helps out. That's why I have the Patreon. So if individuals want to sponsor me and help get me to more games, uh, you can check out the Patreon link down in the description below as well. But ladies and gentlemen, you, 
enough of me trying to promote myself because I do a good job of that on social media. I don't need to do it here on the podcast as well. It's time for me to promote someone else, and I am excited to have back on the podcast, but for the first time on the Northwest Baseball Report show, Brian Kitamura. He is the head coach for Whitman University. Brian, how are you doing today? Doing great, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. So, I mean, right off the bat, Brian, I mean, here you are. The season is going what is it like for you and the players to be able to put the uniform on and to play real game? I mean, real games that matter. It's been awesome. Uh, we're really thankful that, you know, Whitman has done an outstanding job with our testing protocols that our conference has been in alignment with what we need to do to make sure that things are safe uh, on every campus that anyone plays on. And also for all student athletes um, and staff and faculty, of course, but um couldn't say enough about uh, how the season has gone so far, just allowing our student athletes to get back on the field. Our players obviously have absolutely loved it. And I think it's something too that um, has been remarkable, you know, showing that, uh, you know, the love for the game, right, is, is definitely runs deep, uh, especially for our players. And just to be back out there uh, with their teammates and, and together as one unit has been huge. Yeah, and it was definitely, I've talked to a number of players and even coaches, and they've said the same thing where win or lose, it, it doesn't matter as much as they're on the field playing. But for you guys, you've actually had a chance to win some games. You're actually doing pretty good so far in conference. Let's see, you're, you're six and two right now in conference. What's it like right now to kind of be in the lead standings wise? Our guys have done a great job. Um, you know, we're not playing our best baseball yet. We're just just starting to hit our stride. Um, we've battled through a significant number of injuries throughout the first four to five weeks here. And so this weekend being our bye weekend is very welcome. <laughs> we're taking the time and the opportunity to uh, rest up a little bit and then also get back to our foundational skills so that we can really launch into uh, the rest of the conference season. But um, yeah, result-wise, you know, we're, we're doing well. Uh, we know that, you know, with with more work and, and uh, you know, a little bit of a sharpened focus as we start to make some adjustments to our routines uh, that we can become even better. And that's really what we focus on. Like I think I mentioned to you last time, just working to get 1% better, seeing how good we can get on a daily basis, keeping that present moment mindset. And, uh, you know, that's also translated really well um, in this pandemic year too, just trying to enjoy the moments around each other, enjoy every day out in the field together, um, you know, especially after everything that's happened the past year, year and a half. Yeah, absolutely. And then for you guys, I mean, you've played 16 games this year, but you guys have actually had a pretty solid offensive outing from the very get-go. Your bat team batting average is 306. You have 18 home runs. I mean, it's got to feel kind of nice for you and even for your pitching staff knowing that, hey, the offense is going to show up more times than not. It really is. Our, you know, <clears throat> our hitters have done an amazing job. Um, you know, we had the benefit of bringing our players back a little bit early to campus since we didn't have a fall ball season. Uh, and also just based off the campus guidelines here at Whitman, um, we brought teams back in different cohorts. And so we were part of the second cohort to come back here on campus, which is a little bit earlier than normal for us. So we had a little bit of extra time. And I really think that helped our hitters, um, you know, getting back in the cages, getting back in the swing of things per se, um, generating their own rhythm. You know, we, we have revamped a little bit of what we're doing offensively this year, philosophically. And so uh, that's also helped to just trying to free our guys up as much as we can so that we can, uh, you know, truly play an action or inside of baseball. And uh, so far it's worked and we've run a few balls out of the park for sure. Um, you know, that's, that's our guys, uh, you know, a testament to them in, in terms of what they've done with their swings uh, over the past year and also getting in the weight room as much as they can too, um, you know, uh, preparing for this spring. Now you mentioned it, it is your bye week, and so you have a chance to kind of regroup, heal up. Are there also some things that you guys as a coaching staff are kind of focusing on to, you know, you look at it and say, hey, we got to get a little bit better in this specifically going forward the rest of the season? Yeah, you know, there's uh, obviously health is paramount. Um, that's a, a big focus for us right now. You know, um, gosh, we were we were down to uh, a few subs uh, this past weekend, you know, in our, in our series against Whitworth at, at several times. And so um, getting healthy is going to be really key for us to be able to challenge each other at practice and to continue to see the success that we've had, uh, you know, early on in the season. Um, you know, that, that is really our, our main focus right now. In terms of other things that we're focusing on, you know, um, execution is something that we talk about on both sides of the ball, especially from a pitching standpoint. Um, you know, just trying to execute better in certain situations and high leverage situations, 
is something that we have done an okay job of and that we know that we can get better at. And I think that's just going to come with time, you know, more time on the field. And a part of that too is just, and we got a lot of young guys in our lineup right now, um, you know, offensively on the mound. Um, and so that's, that's been something too, um, just trying to keep it in perspective, right. That, you know, even the sophomores technically on our roster academically, I mean, you know, those guys only got a third of a season last year. And so really, you know, they haven't even had a chance to play, 30 collegiate games, you know, they're, they're, they're not even full season into their college career. And so there are some of the, the little things um, that we know we can do right 100% of the time um, that we're not just executing 100%. Uh, and so trying to have a distinct focus on that, especially in our preparation uh, throughout the week has been, has been big. Um, yeah, that, that's something too, that like, once we get healthier, we're going to be able to push a little bit more um and uh you know play at the tempo that we want to especially in practice and so we're, we're itching to get back to that you know so that we can run around the bases a little bit incorporate a few more of the action oriented pieces we just talked about um even more so like we've always done a great job and um you know tommy richards did a great job uh, here leading our offense uh and so trying to just continue to build on that and see how good we can get like i said uh this year um see what more we can do uh now that you know hopefully knock on wood we'll have a full season in front of us and you mentioned Tommy, who I just had on the podcast just a, a few days ago. And, and uh, you know, talking with him, he is a high-energy guy, a lot of fun. What's it like for you as a head coach to see your assistant coaches go on and, and take on these new challenges and be head coaches themselves? Yeah, it's awesome. I couldn't be happier for Tommy. I mean, great person, great friend, great family. Um, you know, we keep texting. Obviously, obviously we keep in touch, uh, you know, very close. Um, so that's something that it's – you know, it's great to have everybody here on our staff. Um, you know, I'm really fortunate that we've got really good, really good people, you know, first and foremost on our coaching staff. Um, but I also know too, and I, I tell our assistants this, that like after four or five years, you know, based off of their goals and their vision, you know, if becoming a head coach someday is something that they want to do, then absolutely after four or five years, like we're going to go through um, basically a four or five year cycle where uh, allowing every coach to have a different, um, opportunity each year to invest in different areas of our program and so that's just my own personal philosophy so that assistant coaches can see uh by the end of four or five years every aspect of of a program uh and not just seeing it but like actually getting to dive in and manage it you know and so we rotate a lot of responsibilities within our coaching staff uh, especially internally um and i you know full believer that that helps to prepare uh, our assistant coaches for you know the next step in, in their career and so um you know, that's something that i you know I definitely enjoy getting to work with them in a mentorship role and um, you know, loved having Tommy here. I <laughs> wish we could still have him here for sure. Uh, but at the same time, you know, he's, he's a great head coach and he's going to have uh, a lot of future success ahead of him. That's one of the things I, I love to see is, you know, coaches moving out, taking on different jobs, especially staying in the Northwest because, you know, he's a Northwest guy. So for him to really build a new program here, that just adds so much. And really, I think it builds baseball overall. We're seeing, we're seeing a lot of depth at the coaching level in the Northwest and that's just, it's good for the game all the way around. It really is. There, there's a lot of great young talented coaches in our region right now. And um, you know, sometimes our region doesn't maybe get the notoriety that it should. Um, but I know that uh, everyone in our region, you know, um, really helps with that mentality to, to really take care of the younger coaches. You know, I, I was very fortunate to have um, a good number of coaches who, you know, helped me when I was, when I was younger as an assistant coach and even as a young head coach um, to show me the ropes, you know, uh, and that's something that's pretty special, uh, especially with a lot of the, the coaches who um, have spent a significant amount of time uh, at the college level. Um, you know, Pat Bailey, um, Coach Garland, uh, when he was at St. Martin's, um, you know, are just two names that come to mind right away um, who, you know, went out of their way to help make sure that um, you know, my career could get off to a, a strong start. Um, and sometimes it's just the little things, you know, talking between games when you're out recruiting, um, going to get a bite together, you know, to talk about how you're going to build your program, how you're going to invest in your players, how you're going to create the best experience possible. Um, you know, uh, those are all things that, that are part of coaching uh, that hopefully I can help carry on, you know, for the next generation as well too. Absolutely. And then, you know, looking back at your team, obviously, once again, you mentioned earlier, you have sophomores who really didn't get a lot of games in last year. They're still not even a full season in to their careers. You know, have there been a few players that you looked at and said, man, 
even though they haven't had a lot of playing time, they've really stepped up leadership wise. And you've kind of been uh, excited for their, their growth in this last year. Absolutely. Uh, there are several players that come to mind right away. Um, you know, we've had several first year players who, um, you know, just stepped on campus this spring since we didn't have students uh, living on campus this past fall. Um, Ethan Sitzman has done an amazing job, uh, you know, playing up the middle for us early on in his career. Um, you know, just high energy guy brings it every single day. Um, absolutely love it. You know, keeps things light at practice, but at the same time, like very disciplined in his approach and how it goes about his business, um, to work, to get better. And then, uh, you know, same thing can be said about all of our first year class and, um, you know, with our sophomores too, um, you know, Ben Parker is off to an amazing start this year. Um, you know, Ben is a, uh, physical player, like, you know, absolute gym rat. Um, you know, he, he's done an amazing job, um, with, with everything that he's put in over the last 12 months, um, during the pandemic to make sure that he was ready to go this season. So, um, a lot of our younger players are really stepping up and, and we can see that, you know, even just in the interactions and them building relationships with each other as much as possible, uh, given the COVID guidelines that we have here, that's been, that's been important because, um, and we didn't get a fall together. So uh, from a leadership standpoint, um, our captains are doing a really, really good job. Um, our upperclassmen are doing a really good job of not just leading, but helping to, you know, influence and teach and mentor. Um, but a lot of that goes both ways. You know, there's a lot that um, isn't seen all the time. And our, our younger players are doing a really good job of that, making sure that they're, they're helping each other out, picking each other up. Uh, and those little things can go a long way. You know, when we talk about that on a daily basis in our program. Yeah, that's one of the things I think people might overlook. They they see that, hey, players are back, they're playing the game, they love it. But for a lot of people, they don't realize these freshmen have never even met their teammates, you know, maybe on a Zoom call or mm -hmm. something like that, but they've never seen them play, never interact with them, you know, in face-to-face. -face. So that relationship building had to happen pretty quick. But how was it for you guys? I mean, did it take very long for the guys to connect with each other? We were very fortunate that we spent a significant amount of time together on Zoom and our upperclassmen did a great job of trying to find ways for guys to connect, um, you know, whether it was everyone on GroupMe or texting or on Discord, whatever it might be, just trying to find ways for guys to connect uh, when everyone was back at home. Um, you know, this spring was challenging because after we, we moved in, um, you know, we have all of our C athletes here at Whitman living in the same dorm. And so during the two-week quarantine, uh, period that we had we were still allowed to practice but we had to keep things in pairs with roommates like you know, guys could only play catch with their roommate uh, we could only have small group practices so we were actually running you know four to five practices a day just straight through to make sure that uh, everyone could have access to the facilities and then you know we clear the space clean the space right the next group would come in um, making sure that we did everything to protocol and to keep everybody safe. And it, it worked out really well, but it, it was very interesting because, um, you know, we were three weeks into practice and talking about the same philosophical concepts, meeting on Zoom together as an entire team in the morning. Yet, meanwhile, you know, all the first years had never met the guys who weren't in their practice groups. <laughs> you know, so we're, we're three weeks into practice and some of the guys on the team still had never met each other in person. Uh, and so that was definitely... Definitely an interesting and unique challenge that's very specific to this year. Um, you know, usually it's flipped, right? You want everyone to build relationships first and get to know each other a little bit. And then you step on the field and uh, it was complete opposite this year, you know? So uh, it was definitely, definitely a, a really good thing when we were finally allowed to practice together fully as a team. Um, and, you know, the relationship building continues, you know, and it evolves. And that's the fun part about uh, being, being a member of the program is that, you know, that never stops. So, um, in a, in a sense, you know, being on the road, as, as challenging as being on the road is sometimes, um, you know, we're on the road the first three weekends of this year, but that might have also been one of the best things for us because we got to spend a little bit more time um, in closer quarters, obviously just out of necessity uh, being on the road. Um, obviously still staying within guidelines too, right? But um, we're on the bus together, right? Everyone's on the same schedule. Uh, so those are things, too, that um, we're definitely thankful for. And I think that's really helped us kind of speed up that process of everyone getting to know each other. Yeah, bus trips are always definitely a, uh, a bonding time for teams, uh, just with the stories and things that happen. And, and it's awesome to see. But for you, I mean, obviously, once again, the season's still early. You still have a lot mm -hmm. of baseball to play. Looking towards the, the, the rest of the season, you know, what are your expectations and what are your, your goals as you guys, you know, make that push throughout the rest of the season? 
Great questions. You know, our expectations within our program stay the same. Uh, we let our players set the goals, you know, for, for themselves and the coaches set the expectation. So the expectations and the standards stay the same, you know, 100% with what we're doing from the get-go of the season. Um, the goals, you know, those, those can change sometimes based off of what we accomplish maybe sooner in the year than we anticipate, or, um, you know, maybe needing to readjust specific goals uh, based off of um, our vision at certain points of the year. And so our players have done a great job with that. Um, our goal is to go out and win every series and make it back to the conference tournament and give ourselves a shot to get back to the NSA tournament, right, and play for a national title. That's, that's our goal, you know. Um, obviously, those are result-oriented goals. And so I'm really proud of our, our players. You know, um, something that was a little bit new this year that's been great is, um, you know, led by our captains and uh, as a team, you know, basically – in alignment with our goals um, and players came up with uh, a dugout chart uh, where, you know, there are certain <laughs> metrics that they wanted to make sure that we kept in game uh, every single game and throughout a series. And, you know, those metrics, you know, if we win or lose, uh, you know, those battles, and that should give us a pretty good indication as to where we come out in the weekend. Um, and they're not, not necessarily on the field pieces as well too, right. Things that we need to be doing that we can control 100%. And so um, really proud of our players, uh, in that sense, because it shows that they've, you know, they've really embraced uh, the mentality and the mindset of what we're, what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish and, you know, playing one pitch at a time. So that's been fun, you know, trying to give our guys as much ownership as possible. That's what it's all about, you know, and they're learning through it. We're uh, sometimes we're learning the hard way, especially with a lot of younger players in the field, but that's okay. You know, um, these experiences are, are invaluable with, uh, with where we're at. And as we build throughout the rest of the year, you know, getting a lot of young guys in early in the season should pay, pay dividends later on. Absolutely. Well, Brian, thanks so much for taking the time and good luck the rest of the season. And hopefully things figure itself out and I get out and cover some games, you know, maybe in the fall or even next spring. Absolutely. Well, Josh, thanks so much for doing this. We really appreciate you and um, excited to follow um, both your podcasts now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Have a good day. You too. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Brian Kitamura, he's the head coach for Whitman. And, you know, the team is coming out strong. I mean, that was always one of the big question marks for every team was how was the relationship going to happen between the players? How was teams going to respond to having months and months off and not having a fall and for a lot of players not having a summer? And so it's fun to see teams that come in and say, hey, yeah, it's been a challenge, but relationships are building, you know, we're developing our skills, we're, we're out there doing our thing and, and even winning, you know, I know there's some teams that, you know, they're still trying to figure things out and maybe the results aren't happening on the field, but it's just, it is what it is. And here in the Northwest, just to have baseball going, that's important to me. And I know, I know I want to see my teams that I cheer on win, but I'm more, more caring about just seeing them play because that's the biggest thing. That's what's going to impact lives. Let's be honest. Baseball isn't just a game. It really is a tool for teaching towards the future and a lot of other things uh, in life. So I love that and uh, just glad to be a part of it. I really am glad that Northwest Baseball Report is something that is connected and able to promote these things. But guys, thank you so much for listening. You know what? I'm just, I'm so glad that I'm doing, having guests back on the podcast, talking baseball, I missed it. I really did. I needed it for my own mental health. So guys, thank you for listening. I hope this helped you out as well. And until next time, guys, catch some baseball. I know Major League Baseball is about to start. NWAC is about to start. It's all going on. I love it. Talk to you guys later.